So Hilton, you were just moderating at a talk about social innovation earlier um, in the morning. Um, can you tell me a little bit, like what were the biggest takeaways that, that you, you took from that talk? And also, um, were there, if you'd like to talk about some issues that you wish you could have discussed further and during that time? Well, I would say there is no path that is wrong if mm -hmm. you persist. Because there, there are different people at different ages at the panel. There are entrepreneurs that are 20 something years old, there are mm -hmm. entrepreneurs that are 40 something years old, and there are people who started straight as a social entrepreneur. There are people who started as an engineer, a business person from a mm -hmm. corporate perspective. So there are so many different people who eventually became a social entrepreneur. So you don't have to think that, okay, you're now in the wrong situation, because there's no situation that is not rewarding to you. It's always that you can something, you can learn something and just bring that expertise, combine your passion, mm -hmm. find out the solution, understand the problem, and eventually you will, you will find a great solution. Well, nice. Well, that's, that sounds very inspiring. Yeah. And you are in the IBGM program at Correct. HKU, right? Yeah. This is, I know this is one of the most, like, the uh -huh. very prestigious, hard programs to get into. <laughs> Would you say that um, through your program at, at, at HKU generally, there is enough being done to foster the spirit of social entrepreneurship among students from your perspective? Um, I think there is definitely uh, a growing amount of resources put in nurturing social innovation in Hong mm -hmm. Kong U, but I don't think that is enough, and especially in previous years. I think the social entrepreneur thing is only uh, cultivated this year. In fact, I started Hong Kong U Social Entrepreneur Network, uh -huh. a student society organizing monthly events to cultivate social innovation at Hong Kong U. Mm -hmm. But before that, there was not such an organized uh, society or any activity nurturing that. Mm. So I think there was definitely a lack of it. There was definitely a lack of it, but it's growing and I, I'm very happy to see mm -hmm. this. And I think it's, we definitely need to promote social enterprise, social innovation among business students in the business faculty because before I, before I got to know about social business on my own outside campus, I don't think I learned anything about social business at, oh. in the faculty. So everything that business students know um, is basically about making money, joining a British bank or like mm -hmm. a consultancy firm. There's big firms in Hong Kong, Common Trends, Common Path. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, that'd be great if students can get to know more about social business. Yeah, definitely. And um, you were telling me earlier about what your next step is going to be because yeah. you're about you've basically graduated from HKU yeah. um, already. Um, where is your path on social innovation taking you next? Um, I'm going to work in a startup accelerator in Austin, Texas for Ooh. at least a year. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm so excited for that. Um, so I'll be able to work with 10 startups from all over the world simultaneously. I mm -hmm. think it's a very good opportunity for me to understand, okay, which kind of startups fails, which kind of startups works. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's a perfect uh, situation for me to understand a diversity of startups. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, at the same time, I'll definitely volunteer there and get to know social business in the US mm -hmm. so I can uh, learn from there and perhaps bring to Hong Kong or bring to any cities that I'm going to uh -huh. um, um, put myself in. Oh, nice. Well, I wish you every success. Thank you so much Thank for speaking so with me, much. Hilton. Thank you.